All right, before we go any farther, I want to make sure I'm not misleading anybody with the type of benchmarking results I'm able to provide for you. Uh, the only benching I was able to do uh, this morning is playing out behind you right now. And while I'm happy with my performance of 315, that's not the type of benching you guys are looking for. So I just want to be clear that I'm a brand new YouTube channel that does not get sent review samples or anything like that, but I can still bring you information that I've gathered online as well as my thoughts on the topic. So we've got the Ryzen 5 Zen 3 processors launching today, and I took a while finding what I felt would be the uh, most uh, thorough and interesting um, benchmarks available. So a lot of the major outlets, especially on YouTube, things like that, are posting benchmarks just for the 5950X. And I could be wrong, but I, I believe that's actually where AMD's um, embargo tells people to be today. I, I could be wrong on that because a lot of outlets aren't releasing... Um, benchmarks for the other processors in the lineup. They're focusing on the 5950 today, despite all of them launching. Speaking of all of them launching today, I'll say right now, I just went on Newegg this morning to try to get one myself, and by the time I was on there, uh, they were all out of stock across the board. So, you know, maybe your results will vary and you'll be more diligent trying to track one down. However, let's see if they delivered on what they promised. So I found this, an, uh, is it, I still don't know if it's Anand Tech or an Anand Tech or Anand Tech, whatever. I'll have this review linked down in the description because this is the one that I focused on, although I did look at several others to confirm results. And I'd encourage you to look at as many reviews as you have available to you. So what do we have? Well, we're looking at the 5950X, the 5900X, the 5800X, and the 5600X, which come in at drastically different price points. And this 5600X is the one that's by far the most interesting to a lot of people, uh, given the price point and performance. So, and, and I mean, the TDP, 65 watts for the kind of performance you can get out of this thing that we're going to see. Wow. Anyway, so let's see here. So, uh, I'm not going to go through this entire review. It's incredibly extensive. The link will be in the description. But first of all, AMD promised huge instruction per clock, per, per, sorry, in instructions per cycle improvements over the previous generation. And that was stated by AMD that they'd have a 19% gain. But we want to see independent confirmation of that. And uh, according to this review, they have delivered, which is huge. I mean, just huge. Ge one generation... Uh, to the next improvement in that intra uh, instruction per, per clock or uh, IPC gain. Anyway, so what else? Their single-threaded performance was touted as finally beating Intel. And, well, here's your Cinebench R20 single-thread performance results. And what do we see on top? Um, everything from AMD <laughs> Zen 3 <laughs> that was tested is sitting on top. All of them have at least a 600 score, which nothing tested here from Intel was able to deliver. And that's a big deal because Intel's been hanging on to that single thread performance lead over AMD, despite having been beaten in multi-thread performance um, by the Ryzen stuff um, on previous generations. Now, gaming is another big question mark. So uh, a lot of people are like, cool, all this multi-thread performance and all of that. Um, and for people like me who do render videos or do other productivity tasks in addition to being gamers, do take that into account. And that's why a lot of people have gone with these Ryzen chips, even when they weren't actually beating Intel at gaming performance. So how does it game, guys? How does it game? Well, it turns out from this review, as well as I did watch through some other reviews, that it's incredibly game dependent, but it does look very good. So let's just pop into some games. So um, it does depend on what you're looking at. Uh, I don't, um, so some of these didn't actually load well. This, this, this review was somewhat, um, I think, uh, overloaded by interest in it right now. So I'm going to find some of these charts that actually did load <laughs> for me here. So like here's Gears Tactics 720p, low settings. And again, the idea of turning all those settings down, most of you are already aware of this, is that you want, when you're testing the CPU's gaming performance, you want it to be limited by the CPU, not the GPU. So that's why you turn all those graphics settings down. So to be clear, if you're planning on gaming at 4K, you're going to be see, you're going to be GPU bound anyway, so you don't care as much about this. And I'm going to go off on a little tangent here because um, 
should you spend a lot of money to get all this really good CPU performance, or should you go with just a cheaper one that does good enough? Because Well, if you're gaming at like 4K or something like that, you can probably go lower on the CPU, actually, if you're going to be GPU bottlenecked and gaming's your focus there. But a lot of people forget that there's two different groups of gamers. There's the people who want to play at 1080p with a high-end GPU. And some people are like, that's a complete waste. That's a stupid build. Why would you do that? It's not dumb for ultra-competitive Gamers, if you're in like the esports scene, you want 240 hertz monitor, maybe uh, there's like 360 hertz monitors out now, right? <laughs> um, you want that kind of performance, or even if you're at a 144 hertz monitor, a lot of time, uh, if you go up to 300 frames per second in your game, you're still reducing input latency. So as somebody who is interested in single player games, but has been known to get into a competitive shooter every now and then, um, it is something that some people care about turning down all your graphics settings and running at a low resolution to get incredibly high frame rates. And in that kind of situation, you tend to be CPU bound. And so let's take a look. Well, in Gears Tactics, we're seeing a nice win from the uh, AMD lineup here. And you can see it compared to the uh, Intel lineup and then the previous gen Ryzen's. But this doesn't line up this nicely in every single game, just to be clear. So again, seeing like Far Cry 5, we're seeing a similar performance result. And, and look at these, these aren't massively different performance numbers from the Intel and the AMD here. So what I wanna sh really focus on here is that at the high end, it's, it's mostly a draw, although in certain games, AMD has a big lead and in certain games, Intel actually still has a big lead. Um, and yeah, so take a look at here. Here's uh, one where we're looking at F1 2019 where the Intel processors are coming in on top. But again, it's not this massive lead, but it, it is a lead. So this is very game dependent. World of Tanks, we're at 1080p, we're seeing another AMD victory over Intel there. And again, we've got, um, that's World of Tanks dropped down to 768p, absolute minimums. Well, then we're seeing it, I mean, they're all just kind of <laughs> capping out at 500 there. That's probably like a, uh, the game only goes to 500 kind of a situation, you know? Um, so Final Fantasy 15. Okay, this is at 4K. Um, we could look at other resolutions, but again, if you're at 4K, you're mostly getting your cap from your GPU. So again, I'm just scrolling through some of these results so that you guys can see them. Like I said, some of these didn't load in for me today because I think this review is getting uh, absolutely bombed with traffic right now. Um, so again, um, on Deus Ex uh, 600p minimum settings, we're seeing the um, Ryzen's taking a nice lead here. What else do we got? Civilization VI, again, Ryzen's taking a pretty good lead here over the Intel stuff. And again, I don't want to, you can always pause this video if you want to take a look at these or try to load up this, um, this article yourself in my description. But like I said, at least as of the time I'm filming this, it's hard to get this thing to load up. But in general, again, here uh, we're seeing a trading of blows. It's, it, you can't clearly call a victory here. And um, another review I might point you to, uh, sorry, we're jumping into synthetics here. So again, if you're interested in, in, in not just gaming and you wanna look into single thread and multi-thread performances here, again, as we've seen in, in that kind of a setting, these AMDs are just looking fantastic. And um, so what, what's our conclusion here? Okay, so I would say AMD has absolutely delivered on their promise of huge instruction uh, per cycle uh, improvements. They've delivered on that. They've delivered on huge improvements to single-threaded performance, and that has absolutely translated to huge improvements in gaming performance. However, do they have a clear victory over Intel in terms of gaming performance? It really depends on the games that you test. For example, I watched the Hardware Unboxed review of the 5950X, um, and it's, it's victory was large in some games and it also lost uh, by a large margin in other games to Intel competition. And it overall on average in the 11 games tested by Hardware Unboxed came out as basically a draw so at, at, at that highest end chip comparison. So my overall thoughts here are that realistically most people can probably get the 5600X and be incredibly happy with those results. 
And if you're somebody who always wants to buy the absolute best, there is a step up from the 3950 up to the 5950. That's something to think about as well. Um, and again, you can make your own conclusions here, but uh, for my money, for the price and the uh, performance that you get and the power draw, this 5600X just looks amazing. Now, some people will be comparing it to the previous generation 3700X, and that's a bit of a side grade sort of an issue, the, 50, uh, the 3700X having a larger number of cores, but the 5600X having this much improved single threaded performance. So if you're somebody who cares about gaming, I'd say go with your 5600X. If you're somebody who cares less about the gaming and more on the productivity side, maybe your 3700X there is a better choice. Now, overall, like I said, I couldn't find any in stock right now. So you have some time to look up some more reviews uh, of all of this. And I am about to start parent-teacher conferences because that's my actual job, guys. So I've got to sign out here, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about all of this in the comments. And if you made it to the video and are interested in seeing my future technology-related content, you could hit a like and subscribe on the channel. Thank you very much. Have an excellent day.